Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Heart Softeners by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد. We always begin by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى. who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector, and curer. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions, and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, I actually prepared something else to touch on for tonight. But I really can't bring myself to touch on that topic due to the horrifying images that keep coming in and the news in regard to Gaza. Allahu Akbar. So I dedicate tonight's heart softener for the people of Gaza once again. And inshallah, I wish to touch on death. And I will also touch on the topic I prepared for tonight, uh, which is... Uh, Takabur and kibr, in other words, arrogance and pride. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as we all know, for the past two to three, four days, there has been missiles raining down on Gaza. We live in cruel times indeed, Allahu Akbar. And I keep saying this, these are all signs towards the day of Qiyamah. Children, innocent people are being massacred, being butchered and being killed without the death toll just keeps increasing every single hour, Allahu Akbar. And the media is blinding us, is blinding us by showing dazzling games of football and cricket so that we forget what's happening on that side of the world. We are fasting and our du'as will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Du'a is the strongest weapon that we have. Let us raise our hands, especially when we wake up for suhoor, when we wake up for tahajjud, when we are in qiyamul layl, and pray for them. Let us use this powerful weapon that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with to pray for the people of Gaza, to pray for the Muslim ummah at large, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate the sufferings of the Muslim ummah, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them for that great suffering that they are going through, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the highest darajahs in Jannah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us prepare for death. Death is inevitable. Death is upon us. None of us can guarantee for how long we are going to live. And that I, I would say is the biggest heart softener. If we act upon the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he is reported to have stated, Akthiru dhikra hadhim illadhat. Make excessive remembrance of the destroyer of pleasures. Make excessive remembrance of the terminator of pleasures. For the more we remember death, this dunya, the fake whales of pleasure that this dunya adorns herself with will all vanish away. It's just a dream, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. This worldly life is nothing. We have been created for akhirah. We have been created for the eternal life of the hereafter. Let us remember death often. Let us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us rid ourselves from all evil qualities, all of the negative qualities that we have been touching on, alhamdulillah, for the past few days. And also in regard to this particular quality that I wish to touch tonight. It is a quality that even if a mustard seed of it were to be in an individual's heart, he will be deprived from entering Jannah. And that is the evil quality of kibr and takabur. Otherwise translated as pride and arrogance. If this quality is hidden within an individual's heart, and if he does not manifest it out, then it is known as kibr. It is known as kibr. It is known as pride. But the minute it manifests itself on an individual's limbs, 
then it is known as takabbur, and then scholars translate it as arrogance. There are many ahadith and many Quran ayat to state that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates those who are proud. And that Rasulullah is reported to have said that if a person has pride in his heart along the lines of these words, he will never be able to enter Jannah. Allahu Akbar. This evil quality basically locks the doors of Jannah. Uh, restricting access for that individual to enter Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleanse our hearts from that evil quality. And the best story to touch on, to highlight the, uh, the, the badness of that quality is the story of Iblis. The story of Iblis. For if you were to, re if you were to recall the story of Iblis, what was the reason for him to be thrown out of the high post and the high station he was enjoying and for him to become the accursed devil. Allahu Akbar. Let's go to the beginning of creation. Many, many moons ago, long time before mankind, there was a creation known as jinn. And even before the creation of jinn, there was a creation known as bin. I know it might sound funny, but before jinn, there was a creation known as bin. And some scholars also state there was a creation named as Hin too. Hin and Bin. So Bin used to populate the world and they became rebellious. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is mentioned in Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya of Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah. When this creation known as Bin became rebellious, Allah the Almighty sent down armies of jinn. And at the head of that army was none other than Iblis, who was also known as Azazil, according to some of the scholars. Rahimahumullah. So Azazil, aka Iblis, was the head of the army of jinn, and they came down and they chased away that creation known as Bin, and they populated the world. After which, after some time, they too became rebellious and defiant of the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to which Allah the Almighty sent down Malaika, Allahu Akbar, to contain the situation. And the Malaika came down and chased away the jinn to far remote islands. And that is why even now we find jinnat uh, populating and dwelling in far away remote islands. And they took Iblis as captive and took him up to the heavens. Now Iblis, the minute he went up, he was from the jinn. He's not from the Malaika. He's, he's from the jinn. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the ayah which we will uh, discuss soon inshallah. He went up to the heavens and became a pious worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He started to seek knowledge. He started to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ardently, fervently and sincerely. And he enjoyed a high status. Allahu Akbar. Allah the Almighty blessed him with a high status amongst the malaika. And all of this was fine until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announced the creation of man. Allahu Akbar. And when Allah the Almighty created man, scholars also mention when man was created and before life was given to man, in other words, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, when basically when he was uh, lying down like a statue, because before life was given to him, Iblis now goes around by Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and observes the creation of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Because he notices that Adam alayhi salatu wasalam has been created out of clay and he knows that he has been created out of fire. So he, this kibr started to sprout in his heart, if you will. But it didn't manifest yet. But it started to sprout. He started to think, you know, I am made of fire. I am a very pious worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why has Allah the Almighty now created this creation out of clay? So out of curiosity, he goes by Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and taps him on his belly. And you know, a, a hollow sound emitted. And the minute he heard that hollow sound, he came to a conclusion, oh, he's hollow inside. Then it'll be easy for me to sway him this way and that way. Allahu Akbar. These are the evil results of pride. Now pride started to sprout in his heart. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave life to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. And Allah the Almighty commanded the malaika, Azazil also was part of them at that time, but even though he is not from the Malaika, he is from the jinn. Allah the Almighty commanded all of them to make sajda, to prostrate to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. 
And this prostration, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, was not a prostration of worship, but rather a prostration of honor. Allah the Almighty wanted to show the Malaika and the other creations that in regard to the honor and the status given to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, and that is why Allah the Almighty ordered them to prostrate, Wallahu alam, and Allah knows best in regard to why they were commanded to prostrate. This is the explanation of the scholars. Allah the Almighty mentions in the Noble Quran, Allahu Akbar. And remember, when we commanded, when we asked the angels to make sajda, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ To make sajda to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ All of them made, made sajda, made prostration to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, except Iblis. Iblis did not make prostration. فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ أَبَا وَاسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ He refused. He refused to make sajda. And pride came about. He, he, he scorned. وَاسْتَكْبَرْ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ And he became of those who rejected, who, of the kafirin, who rejected the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. And then Allah the Almighty asks Iblis, قَالَ مَا مَنَعَكَ أَلَّا تَسْجُدَ إِذْ أَمَرْتُكَ What is stopping you or what stopped you from prostrating when I commanded you to do so? قَالَ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْ Allahu Akbar. He says, I am better than him. Iblis, now he says, why should I prostrate? I am better than him. You created me out of fire, Ya Allah, and you created him out of clay. Clay is a low thing. I'm made of fire. Allahu Akbar. So this, you see, having self-confidence is good. But then that self-confidence shouldn't, I wouldn't say progress, rather retrogress towards becoming a superiority complex where you think that you are on top of I don't know cloud nine perhaps and you look at everyone else as if they are asses this is how the quality of pride comes about in an individual especially when an individual has knowledge pride manifests itself in a way that you start looking down at people you look at people with that condescending look you look at them you scorn them Allahu Akbar this is the evil of pride because when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam spoke about pride, the, the, the Sahaba Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi majma'in asked him, Ya Rasulullah, then what about those? The narration goes along the lines of these words. What about those who like to dress beautifully, like to dress well? Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam clarifies that it is not about dressing well. In Allah Jameel, Allah the Almighty is beautiful. He is beautiful and He loves beauty. Allahu Akbar. But rather pride is to reject the truth and also to look at people with contempt, to look at people with hate. Allahu Akbar. So scholars mentioned that there are two cures. I won't take long. Two cures in regard to curing yourself from pride. One cure is a knowledge-based cure and the other cure is an action-based cure. I won't delve into them, but I'll mention them. The knowledge-based cure divides itself into two. Basically, it is upon us to recognize ourselves, self-recognition, and to remember that we came from nothing, Allahu Akbar. We were created from a congealed drop of sperm, a mixture of sperm, Allahu Akbar. This is where we come from. Today we, you know, Allah the Almighty has blessed us with all of these faculties and we think high and mighty of ourselves. Let us go back to our roots. We came from nothing. If we self, if we recognize ourselves, then we will put down ourselves. That is number one. And the other is to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to acknowledge that greatness is for Allah the Almighty. Allahu Akbar. Greatness is for Allah the Almighty. Allah the Almighty is the greatest, the most powerful. And we are weakling creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is in regard to the knowledge-based cure. And the action-based cure is to humiliate yourself and to humble yourself in, with the people in such a way that at the beginning it may seem unnatural to you because we suffer from the disease of kibir, of pride. So if we may feel uncomfortable, but gradually it will become something natural. We have to try and be humble with the people, not to think that you know he must come and give 
salams to me or he must make way for me or he must think my opinion has to reign over others maybe at a board conference i won't listen to anybody else my opinion has to reign over here all of these qualities are of pride we need to purge our hearts completely from all of those evil qualities may allah the almighty forgive all of our sins and may he the almighty help us to purify and cleanse our hearts may he the almighty accept our good deeds and may he the almighty alleviate the sufferings of this ummah ya allah may he may he the almighty forgive our sins and may he forgive the sins of our brethren in gaza may he accept the shuhada and grant them the highest darajas in jannah and may he alleviate their sufferings may he bless them and may he fill their hearts with strong unwavering patience so that they be victorious in these trials that they have been put through and for that may they be granted the highest darajas in jannah and may he unite us too in the gardens of Jannah with our beloved master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhir da'wa yani alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullahu khayyam. Donate now. Go to www.thedailyreminder.org slash donate. And stay updated by joining our network's social links.